podcast with Fashionista Yogi. I'm your host, Susan Higgins, Miss Susan If You're Nasty. Welcome to episode number four, y'all. Can you believe it? I made it to episode number four. I really want to shout out everybody for all of your support on the first three episodes. I announced like a week and maybe like two days ago, three days ago on social media that I had uploaded the first three episodes and the support has been tremendous. Like it's, man, like very cool to see all of the people that are listening and like look at the stats. You know, I've been nerding out on learning podcasting for a while um, and I'm still learning a lot and so like you know looking at these stats and seeing where people are listening from is such a cool thing I see people listening in India in the UK in Belgium and I'm like what how did you find me um and that was like right around the time that I announced it on social media so I'm just like man that's so cool so shout out to everyone worldwide checking out Runway to Reiki tell a friend to tell a friend um if you are listening on apple i encourage you and ask you if you don't mind subscribing to the show and leaving a rating and review is greatly appreciated um also what else Hmm. today what are we talking about today so today i am interviewing my cousin christina thomas She is a life coach and she has a company called Herbally Free that is an e-commerce company where she sells CBD products, some capsules that you can ingest, um, some oils and lotions and a whole plethora of products. I use several of them myself. I use the capsules sometimes when I'm in pain before I go to bed. Um, I use one of the oils for when I'm in pain. I put them like, put it like right on the spot where I'm in pain on my wrist and my back, mainly my hips sometimes lately have been bothering me too. I have lotion. I have the Yanni, um, stuff. I have, uh, I bought a whole assortment, but it's really cool actually to have a cousin that has this type of business because she sends products to my whole family all over the country and we all talk about it and compare notes and everyone's really excited for her and really proud of her and her husband. They're doing this business together and it's this been very, very great thing for my family. It's really great to see family members doing such great things. So that is what we're doing today. So what's going on in the world right now? is voting. We are less than two weeks away from election day. So many states have early voting opportunities as well as mail-in votes. I hope that you all are taking advantage of these opportunities and going ahead and getting it done instead of waiting to the last minute. I am going to vote early. I printed out a sample ballot so that I can research all of the people in like the local election and make sure that I'm you know, I know who I'm picking and I'm not just like going through and picking all these people based on party because there's no, you know, there's no straight just like ticket situation this year. So that's fine. Um, I'll do what I got to do. I'll do my due diligence. So I printed it out. I go to FedEx Kinko's last night to do it. And something was wrong with one of the machines. So like I couldn't operate myself. And so I asked the guys and they're like, oh, just like email us and we'll do it for you. So they do it. And I'm about to leave. And I'm like, hey, how much I owe you? And this dude's like, oh, nothing. Don't worry about it. Y'all, it was 20 pages. (laughs) It was 20 pages long. And he said, don't worry about it. I was so happy to encounter this kind soul last night because that 20 pages was about to be a little grip. So I say this to say there are still some kind people out here. So treat people with kindness. You never know what might come back to you. So I was really happy about that. So tonight I'm going to sit down and do my research on all of these local candidates and bring my sample ballot with me when I go vote tomorrow. So another thing I want to just talk about real quick is I just want to encourage everyone to make sure like you're checking on people because this pandemic is still happening 
Um, there are people that are going to feel the effects of this for a long time. There are so many people out of work. It is heartbreaking. People are people don't have money to eat, to pay for their place to live and have a roof over your head. So if you have these things, these basic things, be grateful. When you wake up every day, be grateful that you have a roof over your head and you have food to eat. You have a device to listen to a podcast on. Check on your people. Think about even... What if you have an uh, previously incarcerated family member that came home from jail like right before the shutdown? Like think about how hard it is already for people that were previously incarcerated to find a job. And then all of a sudden there's a lockdown. Like how ridiculous is that? So just make sure you're checking on people. Like you don't know what people are going through. People may not be like shouting it out and being loud about it. So just remember about remember people think about them and just like reach out to them and just you know be empathetic and kind and loving you know during this time as you can like where everyone's going through something so just like take the mean mug off and try to reach out to somebody and maybe you can make someone's day just with a phone call so let's go right into this episode episode number four going into this interview with Miss Christina Thomas without any further delay. Mrs. Christina Thomas, welcome to the Runway to Reiki podcast. Christina is a life coach with her own company, Living Free Souls, a disabled Air Force veteran, an artist, a beautiful soul, a mother and a wife, and my baby cousin. Welcome, Christina. Thank you so much for joining me today. I'm so excited to finally sit down with you and interview you. Thank you so much, Susan. So Christina is originally from a country, country town called Timberlake, North Carolina, which is not far from Durham, North Carolina. She is literally from the woods, woods, no joke. I was shipped off to her house every summer as a child until I started losing my shit because I did not like being in the country. That was when I realized I was a true city girl. So as a result, Christina is a real nature girl and not afraid of most animals, unlike her cousin. So Christina, please share with me a little bit about what life was like in the woods. Oh, wow. So there are so many valuable lessons of growing up in the woods. Um, A part of my business today, my coaching, my healing, Uh, my herbalist ways, all of that comes from my generational wealth of being raised on a tobacco farm that was bought off the backs of slavery from my great-grandfather in 1913. So I was raised to live a very holistic life, as you know, and live off the land. So it it was a blessing to be able to really understand how to live from the earth the sky the moon the sun how to grow your own food how to take care of animals how to heal yourself because nobody's near you (laughs) (laughs) at all you gotta figure out how to take care of your amputated leg from the tractor that chopped it off so no (laughs) i.e her daddy Yes, my dad. So, um, yeah, I learned everything. Uh, My beautiful creation being, again, in the woods uh, allowed me to be a a spirit that was just free and to be connected and one with Almighty Source. Yes, Queen. So now that you currently live in Las Vegas, which I love your beautiful house and your backyard desert oasis that you've created, tell me about your life in Vegas. How are you liking it? I absolutely love Vegas. It's a funny thing. Vegas was uh, a place I never wanted to go to. It was a place I was like, I'm being banished to the desert. Why? What's in the desert? There's no greenery. So (laughs) I ended up despising it, and I happened to be here, move here on the actual day that was the hottest day on record in Las Vegas. So I was buying, walking around to buy a house and it was 120 degrees in the houses. So no, no, ma'am. Yes, yes. So I was like, yeah, no, I don't want Vegas. But then it turned around and and we'll go into that. Vegas became um, the actual place of healing for my health journey. That's amazing. I love Las Vegas because I have great weather for all these complications and 
things I have to go around in my life to make myself feel good. Awesome. So there are many parts of your story um, as you've had a lot going on in your life um, in general. But today we are going to focus mainly on your health journey. You definitely will be a resident of this podcast, so you will be back to talk about other aspects of your life and your story because your story is long and um, very multifaceted. So currently you have RA, an autoimmune disease. Um, What else do you have going on from a health perspective? I have a unspecified uh, neurological disorder. I have endometriosis, ankylosis spondylitis, um, colitis, Crohn's, uh, irritable bowel disease, um, intense, again, um, neurological order disorders uh, like migraines uh, that are debilitating, cause stroke-like effects, and uh, previous seizures. Lower Jesus. As well as... Military sexual trauma, post traumatic stress disorder. No, I love you, cousin. Yeah, you've been through a lot, but you are standing here beautiful and strong. Yes, yes ma'am. ma'am. Yes, ma'am. So, tell us a little bit about when you got diagnosed. You were 22 years old, correct? In the Air Force, living where? What happened, and how did you know something was wrong? Well, originally. Um, it's a horrific long story, so I would do it really, really, really quick. So uh, originally I had, uh, for people with autoimmune diseases, lupus, MS, RA, endometriosis, things like that, I had previously had six miscarriages, so I had already knew that something was wrong. And during that time, I was having endometriosis pains extremely bad. But I began from the endometriosis pain to have extreme joint pain, like being in the military, you're running around, you're doing extreme things. And when I originally enlisted, I went into security forces. And while I was doing security forces, right up until I graduated, uh, all my joints began to swell and uncontrollably to the point where I could not get them to go down. And of course, you're continuously doing rigorous things and training. So I didn't understand how to get that control. So when I got pregnant, things got very complicated and I couldn't figure it out. So when uh, I was trying my best not to lose this baby, I was on bed rest at week eight. And then once I had the baby, I found out at my six week checkup, I had cervical dysplasia and I was needing to do a colposcopy. Um, So after that procedure, my hips, as every woman that has a baby, your hips go out and in, my hips would not return and my body would not return to its normal state. And I went to do my holistic way. So I went to uh, a chiropractor. The chiropractor said, something's wrong. Why your swelling is not going away. She said, do you have a family history of autoimmune diseases? And, of course, I said yes. And um, she says, I used to be a rheumatologist. I um, retrained. I believe you have rheumatoid arthritis. I need you. You're about to PCS. I need you to find the soonest rheumatologist when you PCS to your next duty station. What does that mean? PCS. Um, oh, so PCS transfer to my next duty station. Thank you. Sorry, acronyms. <laughs> so um, I went, uh, had the baby, uh, had that procedure for that type of issue, um, and went to Utah, and the process began. As anyone knows, uh, when you have an autoimmune, when it's first onset, it's very difficult. Everything was hurting. Um, my intestines, my stomach, my I couldn't feed through, um, my stomach just wasn't working. It wasn't working or was overreacting. My joints wouldn't stop swelling. Uh, so the surgeries began. So at 22, um, I had the devastating news of going, oh my God, I may not be a mother and I may not be able to walk. Um, and then we started the process of the healing. So by that time I had got placed on many, many, many different um, medications, mainly because I believe in mental health and I recognize the magnitude of trauma that I went through. So I went ahead and started my mental health therapy. And with that, I needed assistance because of the dramatic trauma from being kidnapped and raped and aggravated assault and then almost raped again. So that part was very difficult being deployed and having to deal with that. So I started the therapy and the medications. And then once 
the body started recognizing how much trauma with an autoimmune disease, stress exacerbates everything. So my body took it all on. And from that point on, everything started deteriorating. So I just want to go back. You said you, before you went to Salt Lake City, you were where? I was at Eglin Air Force Base. Uh, that's in the Panhandle. Um, Egl- uh, in Florida. In Florida. And so, so that's where Tennessee. you first, yes. that's where you got pregnant and that's where you were, that's mm-hmm. where you had the baby. Mm-hmm. So then when you moved to Utah. Utah, you said something about something devastating happening and then, but you didn't say what that devastating thing was. So and because you said something about you found out you can't have a baby, but you already had a baby. Yes. So from the six miscarriages, Timmy is my miracle baby. Um, Timmy, they had told me from the time they handed me the paperwork, go home and have your miscarriage, pretty much. Uh, so Timmy being uh, the miracle baby, they had pretty much said, uh, congratulations, you had one. You're not going to have any more. You weren't even supposed to have that one. So I had to find the devastating information. I had to have a hysterectomy. At 22. Uh, at 23 at that time so I was 23 so I had the hysterectomy at 24 um and from that hysterectomy um they took out the service they took out everything uh the damage that had been done um so I had to have the devastation of not being able to be a mother again on my dreams and my body was steadily shutting down and they had started the medical evaluation board oh wow Whew, it's a lot cuz Okay. Um, oof. So let's discuss from there. Now you're in Salt Lake City. You find out you have RA, mm-hmm. right? Well, you've- originally they had told me I had lupus because um, my liver and my kidneys had taken on some severe damage and they could not place exactly what autoimmune disease. So they, before I was officially diagnosed, they had already started treating me for MS and then lupus. And then they dialed it down to, again, from all the trauma, the exacerbation of the pain and the magnitude and inflammation, they nulled it down to, it's your joints. And most people, as you know, with rheumatoid arthritis, it's like, oh, what joints are affected? Well, 70% of my joints are affected. So I've had over 36 surgeries and procedures to replace, take out um, damage from the disease. Okay, wow. Um, So since then, so you were in Utah living in Salt Lake City for how how long? So nine and a half years. So I PCS there in 2005, meaning I transferred there in 2005. Thank you. That's not military folk. Yes. And so 2015, um, by in 2008, I was medically retired uh, because by then my body had shut down completely. Um, I was at work, had a straight seizure in the middle of conversation. Um, I was working on some, uh, F-22 stuff. I remember and having a conversation and just literally seized right in the middle. And then they didn't understand what was happening. So after that, they took me off. They said that I had way too much going on. I couldn't handle it. So they ordered my husband to take me to an institution and take me off the 30 medications and institutionalize me. And how long were you institutionalized for? I was having seizures at the time. So looking back in my records, so it was, uh, I believe, closer to a month. A month? Almost, yes. And in that time, they were working on taking you off of all of these antidepressants and all of these... antipsychotics, anti-inflammatories, uh, narcotics, opioids, steroids, biologicals, and chemotherapy. So they put me in a room. Good God. Okay. So... That was 08. That was 2008. Okay. And you came to Vegas in what, 14? Uh, 2015. 15. Okay. So were there any significant changes in your health from 08 to 15? Absolutely. So all majority of my surgeries were done in, in about an eight year time lab. So most of those 36 surgeries and procedures were back to back to back to back to back to back. So I'd have one arm done, let that heal in two to three months, have the next arm done, have the next lift, uh, wrist done, get that done, go to the leg, get that leg done, wait for that one to heal, go to the next leg, next hip. So um, those went on for back to back six years straight. So, um, 
I didn't have a, a way of managing my health at all other than through Western medicine. And as you know, I was raised holistically and my body was not doing well. Everything was shutting down. So um, my health was absolutely horrific. I remember calling you and telling you how much I weighed. I was almost 200 pounds. You've always known me as your little skinny mini. Yes. And you're like, girl, no. Yes. We're going to need to get that up off of yes. you now. And I'm like, but I'm on steroids. I can't. And, right, and she, she's like, like, yeah, no, honey, no. And I'm like, I can't bend. I can't do anything. And, and she's like, no, we're going to work this out. And being close to 200 pounds from being a person that had to have a weight waiver to go in the Air Force wow. was a full self-identity issue so I had to deal with the weight I had to deal with all of my true identity being ripped away wow so that's where my health was during that time I, I was a walking dead walking dead while still trying to be the best mom and wife and girls leader and I had my own ministry I was substitute teaching I was doing whatever I could during the time of my healing to be able to be productive in, in any community of a facet of giving back wow so where are you now with your health? Wow. Okay. So this is a powerful question. Where am I now? So I put myself in remission last year. Ah, so yes. excited. Unfortunately, I got salmonella and shingles because we're world travelers and stuff happens. So, <laughs> so my immune system could not handle it. it. It couldn't handle it. And I came out of remission and I had to 2019. November was my last chemotherapy um, treatment. Uh, but before that, I had placed all of those 30 pills I had taken off, except that one um, is an anti-seizure mood stabilizer. Uh, I literally took myself off all those medications, found myself a functional medicine, integrated, and uh, the best number one medical marijuana doctor here in Nevada, who's now my business partner, and we put my body back in check. So, so I am doing amazing. I want to go back on one thing that you said. You said that you did chemotherapy. Yes. Now, one would tend to believe that chemotherapy is something that only cancer patients do. Yes. But you did chemotherapy for rheumatoid arthritis. Yes. Can you expand on that and explain what that means? So for someone that has severe, uh, like the reasons that my surgery, I've had so many surgeries is because the, um, the disease... Uh, I like to call it the easiest way for someone to understand an autoimmune disease is our blood, our fluid, our natural body is mistaken. It, it's mistaken as the enemy. So you are literally re attacking yourself because you can't differentiate between yourself being the enemy and being the help. So when you have a chemotherapy that comes in, it goes directly to that overacting cell, your T cells and things, and goes in and places your immune system, suppresses it. Because what's happening is your immune system is overacting. And when your immune system is overacting, that's all your inflammatory responses, how your organs operate, your neurological system, your muscle system, everything, uh, your inflammatory response goes around everything you're doing in your life. If you hit your hand, you're going to have an inflammatory response. So chemo th for someone with an autoimmune disease such as mine and its severity, my immune system being overreactive, I have to shut it down. So methotrexate, rituxan is um, the only means of suppressing all of those autoimmune diseases. So it takes that overactive cell, kills it, along with some other things. Um, but luckily, holistically, I go in and I, I feed all those good cells. Um, you know, we're plant-based, so I'm constantly feeding good cells, good cells, doing herbalist um, work. So when it kills out the bad cells, I still am building up the good cells. Um, and a lot of people don't understand that process is you need to be able to have a whole perspective. So that's what the chemotherapy is for. Now, rituxan is used for non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. Um, as you know, my best friend uh, actually used it for hers in her stage three. Uh, it leaves a lot of pretty uh, significant, as you've seen, side effects from it. Yes. So I want to go back on one thing that you said earlier. You suffered a lot of trauma um, 
physically while you were in the military, um, some sexual abuse, rape situations. Mm -hmm. Um, Do you believe that that stress and trauma did something to trigger any of this in your body? Because we all know the mind, body, and soul is super connected. Yeah, metaphysically, um, even now, uh, mainly that that's a part of my coaching. Um, what happens to a lot of my clients that I see is they don't recognize the trauma that they're carrying in their mind is actually uh, manifested into their body and their actual ailments. And once you start clearing that up, you can start seeing the actual mechanical issues and real genetic issues that are underlying. And when I say genetic, I mean it's actual factual, your science, like with our um, elements, you have an actual uh, marker that says that your chromosome is this way. It's not just a um, a, a catch-all uh, title or diagnosis. So uh, speaking of which, fibromyalgia. Fibromyalgia was one of the first things that they said when they realized I had this much trauma. That's why it took so long for me to get diagnosed because of that metaphysical connection. My rapes, kidnaps, uh, domestic violence, abuse, all of that magnified and brought out those autoimmune diseases at its intensity. They're predispositions with a actual environmental factor that triggers it. So anyone that I'm talking to, nine times out of ten, those people I'm talking to has something traumatic in their life or a stress factor in their life that's exacerbating their pain. Mm. So... Now you live in Vegas and Vegas is the land of the free. So you believe heavily in cannabis for your treatment at this point. Tell us a bit about your treatment and how cannabis is helping you. I started with cannabis, uh, became a medical marijuana patient in 2016 when uh, I got off of all those medications with the opioids and steroids. Um, My kidneys had taken effect, so I couldn't really use your Western medicine without further damaging myself. So I needed something more holistic, and I had started with doTERRA and essential oils and already doing herbs. That wasn't enough. Um, So I went to a medical marijuana doctor. Um, Her business uh, taught me everything that I needed to know to help those ailments for those autoimmune diseases that I discussed. So I went researching and became a kitchen scientist and learned the plant inside out and started finding out which form of treatment would work best. I found out I had to have an actual spinal surgery disectomy and I was afraid because as you know, I need opioids and narcotics. And after being on them for eight years dependency because of the diseases, that wasn't something I was willing to sacrifice again. So cannabis came in heavy that way. And I became a believer because I finished my spinal surgery with no opioids at all. Oh, wow. After the second day. So I went and found the best people in the industry who are now, you know, business affiliates and partners. And we teamed this thing up and started doing what was right for Chris. So I learned the cannabinoids and the terpenes. I already learned the terpenes through my herbal medicine woman, you know, lifestyle. Cannabis is just one herb. Um, So I started applying cannabis, just like uh, replacing the cannabis from the other medications on a regular regimen, treating it just like my medicine, implementing it into my life spiritually, holistically, um, whether that is me eating it or juicing it. It's not just about smoking for someone with an autoimmune disease. It has to pass through the liver in order for it to get into the system. So a lot of people don't understand. I take my cannabis orally twice a day, like someone with a cancer that's trying to cure cancer, you're going to take something called a Rick Simpson oil or SO. That's how I use cannabis. Um, as well as, uh, instant pain relief. And I will smoke if that's necessary, or if I have high inflammation, that'll be my steroid. Nice. Okay. So we're going to take a little commercial break here just to remind you that I am a fashion designer and I do fashion design consulting. So if you have a business idea of a product that you want to start and you have no idea what to do to get it going, like you may just have a ton of questions and that's okay. We can schedule a pick my brain session where you can just 
um, take time to ask me all the questions that you want so that you can take the information and then go ahead and get started doing what you need to do. My whole goal is to help people bring their visions to life. And so if you have a product idea and you just need a designer and you have no, you can't design and that's not your thing, or you need help with looking for factories and sort of seeing the product and getting it made, we also do that. So if you need help with any of those things, you can go to the contact form at Runway to Reiki website and reach out to me and then we can work on getting you going on some of those services. And lastly, you know, I also am a yoga teacher and right now I'm doing virtual private lessons, mainly for people with rheumatoid arthritis and other pain and injuries and beginners. So I teach modified classes mainly because I have pain and injuries and it's very hard for me to use my wrists. So I modify. So I teach other people how to modify. Um, again, like I said, it's virtual mainly right now and we do private lessons. I also can do group classes if you want to group up with some of your friends or family and create a class of your own. And I'd honor that as well. The prices would be the same as what the private lessons are on my website. So for any of that, go to fashionistayogi.com and reach out to me, see what the prices are, you know, hit me up. Let me know if you have any questions and we can get you started. And lastly, I am working on creating a modified yoga course for membership, actually a membership site for people that have pain and injuries. And I would like to just ask people some questions that are potential users. So if you know any people that fit that category that may have rheumatoid arthritis or have painful parts of their body and would love to do yoga, but don't know how, or, you know, just don't know the things to do to be able to make themselves feel feel good to do it please reach out to me as well on the contact form at fashionistayogi.com. Thank you. Now you are a life coach, I correct? Am. I am. So tell us a little bit about your coaching business. So my coaching business, I built around my healing um, because I had to coach myself to wellness. I ended up along the way having a, a women's and girls ministry and I, I saw how much it helped so many people but I didn't want to stay remained in a building. I needed to be free. I needed to be able to get the people out in the trenches that didn't believe to get to their wellness. So I started doing this thing before I even knew when, you know, God had placed in myself saying, you know, I want you to be a spiritual coach. I need you to encourage people. There are people out there that need this encouragement and inspiration. I need you to go and give the good news that they can heal. Yes. And so I took that upon myself and just started doing my own little evangelic kind of thing. So <laughs> <laughs> I just found myself happy, you know, just being of good cheer. And then I found out it was an actual profession and I was doing it pretty damn good. So I went ahead and got uh, certified and started doing mind bodies because of the mental health. I had been through 12 years of consistent, um, mind, uh, mental health therapy. And these are not just every week I'm sitting with a psychotherapist. Um, I'm talking about evidence-based therapy, 16 weeks at a time, year after year, after year, after year, because you have to be able to know how to heal self before you can go out into the community yes. and what works and what doesn't and have some form of empathy and compassion. So that's where I am on that. What are you presently doing with your coaching business? Presently, I am working with a lot of veterans. Um, I'm working with um, a few children in their trials um, as a spiritual coach and helping them really get to know themselves better, trust themselves, and stay encouraged that they can do a lot of the stressful things that we think um, we're the only ones going through or the kids are going through it too. So um, I think it's important that I also help children through the process. Um, so I also have elderly patients. I have uh, chronic conditions that are trying to balance their life with uh, implementing different holistic practices practices and a lot of holistic um, approaches outside of Western medicine. Um, I also have uh, the ability to do uh, the wellness, life and spiritual coaching, um, a part of education uh, in my other realms of consultation in my business, Herbally Free. Herbally Free. What is Herbally Free? 
Herbally Free is my product line and my CBD uh, botanical um, e-commerce store. Um, I didn't want to do a brick and mortar because of the oversaturation of um, products and businesses that are out there. So Herbally Free offers um, pretty much the uh, premier, I guess would be a, a more appropriate word. We're more on the forward side of technology and using nano emulsion um, to make sure that the efficacy of our products remains and we can have a consistent product um, with nano um, technology. So it is not your basic uh, processed um, MCT oil cannabis that can range in um, its efficacy due to it being a plant. So I felt in my own healing that it was necessary to use all the products um, consistently. And through that, I've had other clients that have told me so many things that were beneficial. So I implemented those products as well into the store. So it's pretty much a complete mind, body, wellness, botanical store that I've grown to heal from and other clients have grown to heal from. And it has a, um, a very broad amount of herbs and different plants that can help aid in the healing of those that are trying to create a better lifestyle outside of just Western medicine. What kind of CBD products do you sell in your store? So in Herbally Free, we offer multiple ways to consume CBD, whole plant, which is also known as full spectrum. That means I did not take out any of the cannabinoids. And when I say cannabinoids, that's a terminology that identifies the actual, um, not the genetics, but more of the profile of what the plant is. So in other plants, um, you can have um, terpenes that are added into the products, such as you would find from the essence of frankincense and myrrh and things that we're more familiar with. And those combined give an entourage effect. So I have products that are oral consumption, such as capsules. Um, I do have a tincture. I have a dehydrated tincture, which is like old school Listerine strips. So you could take the strip and it's, um, we're the first to do it in the country uh, with 40 milligrams whole plant. It's uh, super small. It's no more than two inches, you know, long and one inch across. So you could put it in your pocket, put it in your purse, travel with you. Um, we also have teas that you can consume for those that have digestive issues and don't want to take a capsule. Um, I also have um, a yoni steam that I've combined it dry herbs together with industrial hemp and the women's health area so that we can take care of the womb and allow us to be able to balance as women through our chakras. Um, I have soaps so those that are facing a lot of dermatitis issues they actually have an all-natural organic soap. I have massage oils that are also pain oils that you can use across the board. Um, I've had clients using their hair. I've had a lot of people put it in their bath water. I've had people just do it as their massage. And because it is nano, meaning it is transdermal, it crosses the blood brain barrier. All of my products do with uh, the whole plant with the exception of those that I have outsourced. So if it's herbally free and it was something that I created with the manufacturer or, you know, create it with, you know, talking with laboratory technicians, I actually have the products that can give a different approach versus just going to a dispensary because most dispensaries do not carry a wide range of CBD products. They do have isolates for those that do not want THC at all, maybe because they're a veteran or they uh, their job requires them not to have any THC. Not to mention that THC is not legal in all 50 states to manufacture and distribute. However, they can receive CBD uh, products, but if if there's a CBD product that has, um, we have a 0.3 that needs to be less than 0.3 due to the farm bill. And with the farm bill, that means that those states that have chosen to not participate in the um, cannabis legalization, that gives us a, a 
an area of not allowing all patients to have the fullness in their healing because they are limited by taking out the THC. THC is just as important as the CBD. And also with my products, I offer other cannabinoids such as CBN, CBD, CBG, CBD. And some of with the pain oil, there's also CBC. And those are other types of cannabinoids that work in our nervous, our central nervous system mm -hmm. and brain. I can definitely speak to that massage oil because I've been using it a lot in the past few months, especially like in the past month. Um, I've had a lot of like lower back issues and I've just been putting it like right on the spots that hurt. And I wake up in the morning and I feel so much better. I love it so much. Um, but I do have another question. So I have the lotion and I've been like battling with wondering, like, should I use it all over my body or do I just use it in the parts of my body where I'm in pain? I love that you asked that question. Use it all over your body because one of the best herbs in the world for skin with moisture is the industrial hemp plant and marijuana. A lot of us since, you know, we eliminated out of um, our regimens, but it is important that we nourish our skin. So putting it all over your skin is going to revitalize your skin and the epidermis and dermis. It's going to take down inflammation. And you can also, you know, add a little extra, a little extra massage into, you know, your, um, your joints. But I also, because of the one that I use, so it can have a calming and cooling effect, it has uh, peppermint in it. So I always uh, give people the disclaimer that if you're using anything and you have an open wound or sore, or it's an area that is uh, extremely inflamed that may need uh, medical assistance, that you take that into consideration when using any product on top of it. Got it. So I believe that if I'm not mistaken, you also can buy some of the products from your herbally free store with your life coaching business to help some of your clients that are your life coaching clients. Can you explain to the listeners how you do that and what you do and why and the whole whatnot so we understand what's happening there? Yes, um, I'm actually going to Pacific College, which is uh, a health and science college to get, it's the first to be recognized as an accreditation for cannabis consultations. So I decided it was important that I make sure I'm on the forefront of, of being with those doctors and nurses that I'm learning from in these uh, college courses. Um, I want to be able to offer the best um, scholarly and reliable sources of information. So uh, with that, I've actually taken in an entire new look of recommending people in their daily regimen. If you tell me like, you know, me and you both are very holistic when it comes to our lifestyle. And a lot of people have looked at my lifestyle and said, oh, oh my God, you just implemented that in everything. Well, people don't know that we are super sensitive and we got to throw everything at us if we're having a flare. So that means that for these folks, I'm just going to give myself as an example. Uh, I have rheumatoid arthritis along with a whole slew of autoimmune diseases. So for this portion of it, I want to be able to say that um, I have uh, an opportunity to say that I wake up in the morning, I go through my process of healing and all of that. If I'm extremely swollen after I've done my meditation and all of my relaxation techniques from a flare, I go outside and I find a medicative way to bring down the inflammation and to calm the nervous system from the pain triggering it. That can mean that I am implementing by drinking a whole plant hemp tea. That can mean that I can go and take my capsules, which are going to last me for four to six hours, and they're going to work with in 20 minutes and bring in that inflammation relief. So when I talk about implementing those things, it's it's pretty much going in your life and knowing the pained areas and the areas of discomfort and implementing cannabis at the whole plant level 
to um, aid in your healing process. So if I'm doing, if I want to do yoga, but I'm too swollen and I really want to open up, then if I'm using a vape or if I am smoking, I'm able to loosen up and begin to inhale and exhale and go through the process. So I've, I've held some yoga um, cannabis situations where I have a yoga teacher come in and they sit down because some of the folks that I work with have extreme trauma um, and they're not quite ready to, you know, really get around a lot of people and they find that using CBD helps with their anxiety. So bringing over their own CBD and their own um, way of healing with cannabis, um, they go through the process, whether it's through yoga, whether it's through meditation, and then they take that type of regimen and they implement it into their day after I've taught them how to breathe through it, dose properly, and some other methods of use that could benefit them in their regimen, as well as, oh, I'm having extreme pain at night. What are some of the things that I can do? What are some of the types that I can use? Well, you wanna use a um, transdermal, meaning it's gonna pass through the blood brain barrier, put that into your skin at night like you do, building that regimen so that you wake up in a more fulfilling way. So you have that um, type of idea, oh, I'm gonna do this at night, or oh, you know, I'm having a stressful day, I'm having anxiety, I'm gonna take these strips and that 40 milligrams is gonna bring me for two to three hours this uh, sense of relaxation to my, my nervous system pretty much um, so that I can operate. So that, that's a, a pretty much like a, the type of, of, of ways that people are, and every single person is different. Every single person may or may not want to you know, change their lifestyle. They just wanna smoke or they just wanna take their capsule and they don't wanna do nothing else with it. But some people that are really struggling actually need an opportunity, you know, um, to implement it in different areas of their life, exercise, after an exercise, um, they may smoke or, or use a topical to calm down the muscles that may have been torn. Um, again, this is um, whole plant CBD, so it's not just doing the effects of making you feel good, it's actually going in um, into those receptors and doing a lock and key healing in the endocannabinoid system. For anyone listening that may be like in other parts of the country or scattered throughout the world, um, how can they become a life coaching client of yours? I have uh, multiple um, clients that are all over the nation um, and we do virtual or we do teleconference where, you know, some of the places overseas, you know, you can't. Um, they haven't, you know, it's just over the phone um, and it just it works still. I thought at first when with COVID that it wasn't going to be as powerful because I'm used to in person, but it actually the energy is still there. So they're still actually I feel like it gives them a, a better sense because they're in their own space and their own comfort and they're able to write down their notes. They're able to get their takeaway and immediately go and do what they need to do, feeling great in their own space. So um, no matter where you're at, you can, I'll Zoom link it or whatever platform it is best for that person. So if anyone wants to reach out to you to inquire about coaching services or your products, they go to herblyfree.com, correct? Yes. And okay. you can actually, there's a, an actual um, on Living Free Souls Dot com, there is actually a link for products that'll di uh, directly take you to Herbally Free. Early in the year, you told me about some recognition that you received in the cannabis industry. What was that? Um, I was recognized um, for my achievements in cannabis and bringing awareness. Uh, only 1,500 women um, were chosen, and we we're in the entertainment news with a twist called. Uh, Celeb Stoner. It's a magazine online uh, magazine at celebstoner.com. And it pretty much just, um, it lists everyone that you can think of between Miley Cyrus and Maya Angelou and Jennifer Aniston. So to be um, amongst that list uh, is pretty, it just really made me so happy to know that it was that much of an influence on folks. Um, 
I, I never thought that me carrying, caring enough about folks that it would be recognized in that kind of light, even though, you know, it's just in the cannabis industry, it still makes a, a huge difference in people's wellness in life. They'll remember it forever, you know, that they were able to turn to that. So yeah, that, that's one of the awesome accolades. Um, being asked to be a promoter for a dispensary named Cultivate um, and also for RxO Go, which is a product line that's one of the longest, um, uh, also known as Rick Simpson oil. Uh, it's a type of processing that they boil down the entire whole plant, a lot of them, and use the oil. You may have also known that type of process through um, Charlotte, you know, the Charlotte Web strain for kids with epilepsy or Little Lily. They kind of process those things for those kids uh, to help with their seizures and um, other syndromes that they may be facing. So yeah, I um, being able to do that with RxO Go and having such a huge impact on those with PTSD um, and letting them know it was different strain specific like we talked about earlier. So the profile wasn't just a sativa or an indica. It was more of the specific cannabinoids and terpenes to help with my pain and inflammation. So I'm, I'm really happy that I was able to do that promotional video. I've noticed that you have been doing a lot of speaking events lately. How do you like doing speaking events? I love doing speaking events. Uh, I think that's my number one my number one thing, I think, because the voice is so powerful. Uh, I'm an actual speaker for not Southern Nevada, um, NAMI, which is the National Alliance for Mental Illness, is one of the biggest grassroots. Um, one of the promoters, Robin Mead, off of, um, I believe, the morning show and, you know, being a, not the morning show, but Robin Mead in the morning. <laughs> but um, I actually only knew about NAMI because of her, um, seeing her on the news. And then uh, I was doing a lot of work in speaking as the chair for Southern Nevada Veterans Mental Health Advocacy Council and being able to advocate there that voice spread forward for those in trauma. So I became an official speaker in our own voice for NAMI. And I have a veterans uh, population speaking event on November 11th. And I just got done with a speaking event for women in plant medicine for our all the women across the nation that are changing lives, um, legislation, and doctors that want to implement integratively plant medicine. So that was this month. And I had a speaking event for suicide awareness and teen suicide awareness um, for Hope Means Nevada. Um, that one's coming up, but I did the actual awareness for um, recovery and NAMI this last week. And bringing a breath of fresh air to people. So those those are huge, important speaking events that I love doing and helping folks, you know, see the light at the end of the tunnel in their mental health journey. So you mentioned earlier that you have a teenage son and an amazing husband, and you have this life coaching business, you have your CBD e-commerce store, and you have a whole plethora of health conditions and issues that you have to maintain. How on earth are you managing all of this, cousin? Time management. <laughs> a lot of meditation and time management. Um, I, I have things section off. I, I stay pretty aware of my balance and myself mostly because uh, you hold up so much. And as a woman, we take on more than we ever know. So I balance with time management. I balance with communication. I balance with delegation. Um, when it comes to family life, uh, we're also very independent in our greatness and our own movements that we're doing. Timmy is uh, in school at the Advanced Technology Academy here in Las Vegas, the number one school here in Las Vegas for um, all the little smart little genius guys. So he's uh, majoring in mechanical engineer. So when he's done, he'll have have, you know, two of his college years taken care of. Um, yes. yes, and then move on and be an awesome entrepreneur, hopefully, um, and start his own business. Uh, he also has his own side hustle to where he does Timmy T photography. So he's, um, he did photography uh, starting when he was like 12 years old. And I, he asked me to invest in the camera. I invested. So Timmy is actually also on my website, the photographer 
on a lot of them oh, and wow. like with the yes so it's a family affair to wear so he implemented that um tim uh created all of the labels and uh he's pretty much the ceo and cfo of all of herbally free because i have so much going on he runs herbally free so that makes me happy with knowing that he's balancing that he's also a retired chief master sergeant um e9 for those that are across uh, armed forces. So he had a huge um, transition. Now he works in corporate for um, number one gaming company, Aristocrat here in Las Vegas. Um, I love that in his world, he's able to implement that type of corporate life into his entrepreneurship and his past years and experiences in running Herbally Free for me. And um, that's how I balance family life. We make sure that we communicate, eat, um, chill together. We take our brain breaks together in all different areas of, you know, the oasis and everybody just is able to communicate on a, on a good level and be non-judgmental, open and honest and just say, hey, uh, this ain't working for me this week or uh, no. <laughs> so I, that's a beautiful thing to be able to balance when, when you have people that understand and working with you. But are there any other new ventures or goals or anything you're excited about for 2020? Yeah, I actually just became the head of the board for the uh, Las Vegas uh, Veterans Mental Health Advocacy Council here. Amazing. So we are going to be doing a lot of events, bringing a lot of what veterans need to the straight administration and cut out the bureaucracy. So you tell me what you need. Tell me what you think your solution is, and I'm going to take that information. I'm going to go right to the head and say, look, this is what our, our veterans need. Our veterans need this, and this is why they're saying they need this, and this is what's been going on. So if you have a full council, you got more people to bring the wellness that veterans need. And doing that, you know, being a part of something like that also gives me an opportunity to say, hey, look, we already know that most of the veterans here are trying to treat themselves, self-medicate. So if I can get them to, hey, look, go see a doctor. This is your wellness. This is your life. You need to make sure you're doing it right. Then you have places. You need to be put in places to where you can be of service to give people what they need. Wow, that's amazing. You are so just inspiring. I love you so much. I'm I so happy you're my cousin. <laughs> oh, my goodness. So do you have a daily wellness routine or practice? I know that you, you know, use your cannabis for healing. Um, is, are there any routines that you just can't go without to keep yourself grounded and level headed? Do you have a morning routine? What do you do to keep it all together, girl? Oh, wow. Um, I do have, I have a multiple routines based off of my multifaceted life. So if I'm in artistic mode, I have a different routine, you know, that I do in the morning. Um, but right now with having so much going on, my mornings start, uh, if you have an autoimmune disease, you already know your mornings are horrible, horrible. <laughs> so, so it takes us about two hours. So my routines are solid. I have to literally go into a meditative state before I can start my day so that I know, okay, I already have everything listed down, but you know, but it's, I don't look at my phone when I wake up initially because I need to make sure I'm clear in my body what I can handle before I just pick up the phone and say, oh, I got to da 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 I didn't check myself. Mm. What am I capable of today? Is that what I need to do today? Mm. So I have to be real clear with my body and check in and say, what do you need? I'm saying yes to what today? Because it's one thing to say yes. It's quite another to say yes and it's going to add value to my mind and body. Yes. So... That's what I do, my routine in the afternoons. Uh, 420 is, uh, the reason I do 420, because I have my, you know, I'm a wife and a mom. And at 420, uh, I, did, I mandated that as my healing time. So uh, it's not just about cannabis. It could be a cannabis time, but there's other times at 420, that's my grounding time. So that's my afternoon, I'm switching gears time. And then I have uh, another time right before bedtime. And that's enough. That's usually my medication time where I'm taking my last dose. I'm fully grounding. I'm getting clear on what I want my intentions to be for my evening because I set intentions for my sleep. Anybody with PTSD needs to set intentions 
for their sleep. I will rest tonight. I will allow my mind to fully relax so that I can receive what is for me and not just what was projected upon me. Mm. So I definitely encourage everyone that I have clients to have a routine. Lovely. I love that. Sleep intentions. Yes. Um, What is your go-to fashion style? Flowy. (laughs) <laughs> flowy flowy and easy flowy and easy so uh, a lot of people like think it's like hippie like but as you know everything in me is purpose my hair is locked because i have rheumatoid arthritis have you tried doing a sister's hair with rheumatoid arthritis and your wrist broke i'm just saying so <laughs> I do it every day. <laughs> you know that is it's real so tim had me looking a hot mess so i, ha- I locked my hair plus uh with the medications my hair was starting to come out so Um, that's a part of my style, but it's very purposed. Um, I didn't, you know, have so many patches missing from that. Um, I wear flowy clothes because I have, uh, different, you know, cold intolerance. So whatever I'm wearing is functional, but I try to make it curtail to my reality of character. I'm so artistic and multifaceted that I don't, I want to just be comfortable wherever I'm at. So it's just got to be a flow. I want to flow. So I got to wear that flow. Flow and ease. I love that. So what book have you read or listened to, if you listen to audio books, that has most impacted your life? You know, I'm a learning junkie. (laughs) so (laughs) I'm constantly reading. Um, Right now I'm I'm reading The Alchemist for the third time. Um, The Prophet was impactful. Um... Peace from Broken Pieces was impactful. Oh, well, you know, Christ consciousness, I guess I can throw in some Abrahamic law. and <laughs> Most impactful. <laughs> Most impactful, you know. So I guess my Christ consciousness comes from a lot of different, um, uh, I want to say spiritual lights. They're not just one religion. So I, I do a lot of spiritual studies. So it's not just one book. It's actually just the philosophy of it. There's so many, you know, fingers and tentacles to it. So I, I definitely think the most impactful is books on true spirituality. Cool. Now, what podcasts and or YouTube channels are your favorite to consume? I stop consuming. Let me tell you why. Uh, I, I practice what I preach. And when I first started building all of this up, I limited what my diet was, meaning I started taking out things that could not serve exactly where I was going with so many complicated health issues going on. I was being uh, strung to and from trying to build a business. Ooh, that looks good. Oh, and that looks good. And that looks good. So I started like overindulging and wasn't receiving anything. So I took everything out off the table and just started really reading and not listening and not looking at TV. Not, I mean, I, you know, NPR tiny desk. I mean, (laughs) So that's my, you know, my one thing, but I, I do bouts of fasting from that. So right now I'm, I'm in a good two year fast of podcasts and stuff. Okay. Um, who inspires you the most? Uh, there's so many people that inspire me. There's not one that really inspires me the most. I think Gandhi and Bob Marley and Che Guevara and, um, you know, I, Nelson Mandela, these, these people inspire me the most. Jesus Christ consciousness inspires me the most. Um, being able to know, uh, the element of Muhammad and understanding that that inspires me the most. What drives you to keep going and what excites you the most about life? My spirit drives me to keep going. Um, as you know, your mind and body doesn't always align. So your spirit has to drive a lot of it when you can't align. So, um, the spirit of me, when I was laying on my back and couldn't get up physically, or I was in the institution because I was locked away mentally, my spirit is what carried me through to connect the mind and the body again. So I, that's where I'm at when it comes to, to that. Awesome. What are you most grateful for at this moment? To be alive. Yes. And do you have any last words of wisdom on how to have it all? I think the moment that you take the time to get to know yourself and you invest in yourself, you have taken the first step in your lifelong journey and being the absolute 
best of having it all and defining what success means for you. I, you know, we went and we did 10 X and that was so paramount for me of, you know, how do you have it all? And for people that, you know, as you know, you've helped so many people with their conditions, having it all means what did you think you were lacking? So being able to know what you were lacking first, you know, really made a difference for me. And I realized I wasn't lacking anything but other than I want life. So that's how I knew I could have it all. If you, you want life, that means you can have it all. You can have the life. I just had to find me first. Yes. And where can people find you if they want to contact you and or follow your content? They can contact me at www.livingfreesouls.com. And that's with an S on the end of soul. And you can call me. Uh, I'll leave that contact information down there for you to put um, below. What's your IG? My IG is Living Free Souls as well. And do you have a Facebook community? My Facebook community is Living Free Souls. Awesome. Well, Christina, thank you so, so, so much for doing this interview today. I'm so grateful to have done this. This is absolutely beautiful and so full. And I just am so happy to see you smiling and feeling good and spreading your energy and love through the world and your community here in Vegas. And just thank you so much. I really, really enjoyed this. Thank you so much for being a part of this. We're going to take over the world. I guess. Yes, Queen. To, yes, we're going to do this. We're going to set people right on the right journey so they can set themselves free. That's yeah. what's up. Heal that. Yes. Thank you, cousin. Yes, I hope that you all really enjoyed that episode and I hope that you got a lot of it and maybe learned something. Maybe you want to try some CBD products. If you want to try her products, go to herbalyfree.com. If you want to try her life coaching sessions, perhaps reach out to her at livingfreesouls.com. And I will put the links to those websites in my show notes so that there's an easy way for you to get right to them without having to write all this down. And again, I just want to thank you so much for listening today. I will see you again in two weeks because as I said in the intro episode, I will do episodes every other Thursday for now just to keep myself honest and consistent um, and make sure I'm really staying on top of what I said I'm going to do. Um, You guys stay safe and get out there and vote and remember to tell a friend to tell a friend if you're enjoying this podcast and you know somebody that may enjoy this content and again please leave a rating and review and subscribe if you're listening on apple thank you all so much for listening to the runway to reiki podcast talk to you soon